In this tutorial, we will be dis discussing steroids, cholesterol, bile salts, and steroid hormones. Cholesterol is the most important and abundant steroid in our body. It has a hydroxyl group here. It has a hydroxyl group here on the third carbon. You count the carbons in this ring by starting one here. And then you count around. And you keep going around. And then you make like a figure eight. It has a double bond at the fifth and sixth carbons. And a methyl group at carbons 10 and 13. And an alkyl chain on carbon 17. Cholesterol is obtained from meats, milk, and eggs. It's synthesized in the liver and is needed for cell membranes, brain, and nerve tissue steroid hormones, and vitamin D. Clogged arteries like this one here are from high levels that, of cholesterol that form plaque. Cholesterol is considered elevated if the plasma cholesterol exceeds 200 megagrams, milligrams per deciliter and is synthesized in the liver and obtained from foods. A diet that is low in foods containing cholesterol and, and saturated fats appears to be helpful in reducing the serum of cholesterol level. So here's some cholesterol levels of common foods. A large egg has 200 milligrams of cholesterol for one serving. A hamburger actually has 85, whereas skim milk only has five. So let's see what different portions are that make up cholesterol. Uh, the carbon chain is D. This is the carbon chain right here. This is called the steroid nucleus. It's four rings labeled A, B, C, and D. And as I said before, you start counting it over here to three, four, this would be ten, then you come back, eleven, and you make a figure eight. The hydroxyl group is right here, and then the methyl group is right here. Bile salts are synthesized in the liver from cholesterol and stored in the gallbladder. They have polar and nonpolar regions that act like soap to make fat soluble in water. Remember how with soap we had the carboxylic acid here, but it's actually a carboxylate salt. So this area here would react with the nonpolar region, and this would react with the water. Same situation here. It helps in absorption of the cholesterol. When large amounts of cholesterol accumulate in the gallbladder, gallstones are formed. So here is your steroidal nucleus, and this is a bile salt. Here's a chain here, but notice we have an O and A here. That's the salt portion. That's going to what this area here is what's going to make it soluble in water. Lipids in, are nonpolar and made more soluble by combining them with glycerophospholipids and proteins to form water soluble complexes called lipoproteins. Lipoproteins surround the lipids with polar, here's the lipids, with polar lipids and proteins for transport to cells. So here's the phospholipid layer, 
That area up there is polar, and you can interact with water. That's where the phosphates are. And then here's the nonpolar tails that are then attracted to the lipids inside. These are soluble in water because of the surface consists of polar lipids. Lipoproteins differ in density, composition, and function. They include low-density lipoproteins and high-density lipoproteins. And then we have a very low density. Lipoproteins such as HDLs and LDLs transport nonpolar lipids and cholesterol to liver, to cells in the liver. Steroid hormones are chemical messengers that serve as a communication system for the body, produced from cholesterol. And there's male sex hormones are testosterone and drosterone, and female sex hormones are estrogen and progesterone. Adrenal corticosteroids from adrenal glands include mineralocorticoids and glutocorticoids. Steroid hormones called adrenal corticosteroids are produced by the adrenal glands located on the top of each kidney. They include aldosterone, which regulates electrolytes and water balance in the kidneys. And they also include cortisone, or glucocorticoid, which increases blood glu glucose levels and stimulates the synthesis of glycogen in the liver. So here are those steroids again. Make sure you realize that in every single one of these steroids, you have the steroidal nucleus.